Hello, welcome to another English Sparkling with Tweedy video. In the interest of trying to expand the content beyond just me sitting in the woods drinking wine, I thought I'd actually include another shopping segment. So what was it, Crouch End last week. Uh, today I'm down in King's Cross instead uh, to see what the um, ESW offering is like. Oh, I already know, but I'm you know, gonna, gonna tell you. Over there, uh, what is it called, gas station? It looks like a bit of an old gas holder. That used to be Chapel Downs sort of London bar and restaurant thing and sadly they closed that down. I, I went and bought shares in Chapel Downs so I could get the discounts in that bar and I uh, only ever actually went once or twice and then they closed the bloody thing down which is a pain. I've actually just come here to go to Waitrose but I might as well show you a bit of canopy market. There's occasionally a stall here that does a bit of uh, English sparkling. I'm not sure if it's still the same one that I remember. No, maybe it's not. Anyway, I don't have time for this lifestyle vlogging crap. I've got to get into Waitrose and pick up my click and collect order. Let's go, I've got my, um, got my click and collect box. <laughs> Great content. I'm not sure how much of that preamble of me going shopping earlier I would have kept in in the end, but just to get me up to speed, <laughs> this is uh, some wine I bought from Waitrose Cellar. Click and collect, and you know, I can just go down to a supermarket to uh, to pick it up. It's very time efficient. I think I just put the order in sort of 6 p.m. yesterday, and I was able to pick it up by about 3 p.m. the following day. So it's sort of less than 24 hour turnaround as long as you can get to a Waitrose store or possibly do they deliver to John Lewis, I don't know, whatever. The selection of English sparkling at Waitrose cellar is reasonably good. I think it's not bad for something that's kind of roughly a, a supermarket of sorts. You know, Waitrose cellar is their sort of wine um, specialised offering, but a lot of the wines are the same ones that you can buy in at least some Waitrose stores. And the offers are usually duplicated in both. So if there's an offer on the Waitrose cellar, that same offer will typically be on in store on and, and on waitrose.com, etc. Currently, they have a special offer on Ridgeview, twenty four ninety nine. It's a relatively good price. I don't think I have featured Ridgeview on this channel before, and it is one of the best known English sparkling producers. They were sort of there in the relatively early days. I think they started to establish in, was it possibly sort of late 90s? Not long after Night Timber had their sort of early successes, that sort of era. Slightly mixed feelings, to be honest, about their sort of standard offering. It's a while since I last had it, so perhaps I should approach this with a, an open mind. I've always quite liked some of their more sort of special offerings. I think they do buy some grapes in these days. So the vineyard is based in uh, very close to the South Downs, that's the name Ridge View. You get this lovely view of the ridge of the South Downs from the winery, from their home vineyard. It is just north of the village of Ditchling, which has quite a cluster of different uh, English sparkling vineyards. When they produce a wine purely from their home estate, I think that's really interesting. It has some kind of expression of that local terroir that you only really find in Ridgeview and in neighbouring court garden pineapple notes. Whereas I think for their standard, this is also an NV, is it's non-vintage, yeah, non their sort of standard offering, their classic cuvee or whatever they call this. Bloomsbury, they do buy in some grapes from elsewhere, so it's not purely wine from Sussex. I think there's a bit probably from Kent and from Hampshire, maybe further afield from other places like East Anglia even, who knows. Let's open this up and see what it is like. There we go, that's a reassuring deep pop there. What sort of a colour do we have there? Kind of pale gold, pale straw gold sort of colour. Does it tell us anything about the grape blend on here? It lists them at least. It says Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier and normally that list gives you an idea of a, a very vague idea of the proportion so I assume there is more Chardonnay here than Pinot Noir and as usual Pinot Meunier is the smallest component of the three. I'm getting something sort of citrusy Slightly faint though, actually, at the moment. Ever so slightly green, sort of citrusy, possibly a hint of green apple in there. But all, um, all kind of subtle, I would say. On the palate, very dry, crisp, quite light, actually. I would have expected a tiny bit more sort of roundedness and fruitiness from the fact there's at least some Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier in there. I I'm guessing they're in pretty small quantities. It's certainly very pleasant, very drinkable. It's light, not really big on complexity, I would say. Getting a little bit more fruit character now on the palate. 
and now possibly a little bit of that Pinot type character is coming through something in a sort of vaguely stone fruity sort of peachy sort of area and that's a bit nicer it's perfectly fine just it's somehow it's never quite blown me away their sort of their, their standard offering and this is certainly light pleasant drinkable inoffensive just not wildly exciting cheers <laughs>